Working with stereo brubs is an intricate process. This informative step-by-step -step video will demonstrate how to set up, deploy and operate a stereo brubs, as well as how to follow post-deployment protocols. Let's start with what a stereo brubs actually is. Baited remote underwater stereo video systems, or stereo brubs, are minimally invasive sampling tools used to collect data on the diversity, abundance and size of fishes, as well as information on the benthic habitat where the samples were collected. Benthic stereo brubs are deployed on the seafloor, while pelagic stereo brubs are suspended in the water column and, depending on your equipment specifications, equipment can be used from the intertidal to the deep sea. In this way, stereo brubs provide a standardized and non-destructive method to collect data on fishes and the environments where they occur over their full depth distribution and at scales relevant to management. As the name suggests, Stereo brubs use bait to attract fish into the field of view of two video cameras mounted in stereo configuration. To enable size measurements, the position of the cameras on the stereo brubs are calibrated to enable stereo photogrammetry. Stereo brubs differ from brubs in that they have two cameras, whereas brubs typically only have one. Consequently, their ability to collect accurate size data for the fishes from the videos is the core feature that distinguishes stereo brubs from brubs. Next up, the system's design. To reduce the amount of variability in the design of stereo brubs and to maximize the scope for data interoperability, there are internationally accepted best practices, which can be found on the Ocean Best Practice System website. These guidelines, together with the supporting information, provide all the required information needed to assemble and conduct Stereo Brevs research. The core components of Stereo Brevs are a frame, two cameras in waterproof housings mounted on a rigid base bar at convergent angles to provide overlapping field of view, and a bait container that can be fixed in front of the cameras. Most stereo brubs are tethered by rope to surface marker buoys so the boat can move away while the videos are recording and to allow easy relocation and retrieval. Additional weights can be added to the frame when sampling in deep water or in areas with strong currents. When working in deep water or at night, artificial lighting can be added. Lastly, sensors to measure the water temperature and depth can be attached to the frame to collect important environmental data associated with a sample. To enable accurate length measurements, the two cameras of a stereo brubs need to be mounted in a fixed position and calibrated to enable stereo photogrammetry. While in use, it is essential that the cameras don't move to maintain the calibration and allow capture of size data. Detailed notes on the system design options and considerations can be found in the training documents. Let's move on to preparing for a field trip. Prior to leaving on a field trip, you will need to assemble and calibrate the stereo brubs and pack all the necessary gear. Detailed information is provided in the supporting documents to this video, but the key steps are to ensure that all housings, cameras and lights are in good working order. The base bars need to be correctly assembled to ensure that the cameras stay in calibration and the details required for each stereo brubs, like camera numbers and sensor numbers, are recorded in the project metadata. Adequate quantities of ropes and buoys need to be packed based on the planned sampling depths, number of stereo brubs and sampling environment. Once the stereo brubs base bars have been assembled, they will need to be calibrated to enable length measurements. In addition, at the end of a field trip, a second calibration must be undertaken as a contingency measure in case the cameras have moved out of calibration while in use. The CAL, or Stereo Camera Calibration Software, developed by CGIS, is the most widely used and capable software for stereo camera calibration. Importantly, the calibration results from the CAL software package can be fed into the Event Measure Video Annotation software to allow length measurements. Alternative options can be found in the Stereo Brubs Best Practices on the Ocean Best Practice System website. The calibration protocol is well documented within the CAL user manual that can be accessed via the software interface, so we won't go into too much detail here. Importantly, the calibration protocol consists of two stages. The first is the in-water stage, where the camera calibration imagery is collected. Here, the stereo camera pair is placed in the water to record the calibration hardware, normally a cube, 
as it is moved and rotated across the overlapping camera field of view. The second stage uses this imagery and the supporting files for the cameras and calibration hardware in the CAL software to run the calibration. The output files are then saved with the appropriate unique identifiers to link them to a camera pair and field trip. The in-water stage will require some initial trial and error to determine the optimal distance for the calibration hardware from the stereo cameras and the horizontal distance of the overlapping field of view. In remote areas, it is important to consider during the planning process that finding a pool with sufficiently clean water to run the calibration can be challenging. For a successful expedition, you will need one kilogram of bait for each sample you plan to collect. Fresh or frozen fish bait with a high oil content, like sardines, are ideal, but the choice of bait used should consider availability and allow for comparability between different research locations and projects within your area. Depending on your research location, you may need to travel with the required bait, in which case good cool boxes are essential. While in the field and at sea, you will have to change camera batteries and SD cards and perform general maintenance on the cameras and housings. If working on a small boat, this should all be stored in an on-the-boat brubs kit, which includes a watertight container to protect the electronics. The quantity of items needed in the kit depends on the equipment being used. A good boat toolkit is needed to perform the required maintenance to the stereo brubs while working at sea and on land. The exact items will be specific to the equipment design and the researchers should provide checklists to ensure that the important items aren't forgotten. At the end of a sea day, you will be required to record all the sample metadata, download the videos, charge batteries and clean equipment. With all of these to remember, a comprehensive checklist will save you time and prevent errors. Another important step is determining how you are going to collect your data. Stereo brevs have specific requirements to ensure that the samples are independent and adequately sample the fish assemblage. Typically, stereo brevs are left on the seafloor to record for 60 minutes, as it results in the highest number of species being detected at their maximum abundances. Another important aspect to consider is sample separation. Because of the bait plume and extended deployment time, adjacent stereo brevs samples need to be separated by 400 meters to ensure spatial independence. For shorter deployment times, less separation can be considered. Unless research objectives require otherwise, sampling should not take place at crepuscular times due to changes in fish behavior. Researchers are encouraged to follow these standards to maximize scope for data interoperability, but acknowledge that specific research objectives may require the guidelines to be adapted. As for the design of the sampling, this will depend on the project-specific research objectives. However, it needs to ensure valid inferences and interpretations of the data are possible. When conducting spatial comparisons, employing a spatially balanced approach with stratification according to key environmental variables like depth zone and seafloor habitat, for example, is recommended. Alternatively, when surveying large areas, a clustered sampling design may be more efficient. All research should conduct a pilot study to determine the optimal sample size based on power analysis and species accumulation curves. Next up, field logistics. When using small vessels, the protocol can be split between the work required at sea and the work required when back on land. If the work is being done off a ship, then it may be possible to carry out all required activities at the same time. At sea. For the work to be done out at sea, you will need a suitable vessel with space for equipment and the functionality required for the operations. For bigger stereo brubs and deeper water, vessels fitted with a swinging davit arm or pot tipper and winch are ideal for deploying and retrieving the equipment. When working shallow or with lightweight brubs, the equipment can be deployed or retrieved by hand. Multiple stereo brubs can be deployed concurrently to maximize the number of samples collected per day. The number of systems will depend on availability of stereo brubs and the size of the research vessel. For example, it is possible to work with four to six systems of an eight meter boat and during a full day of sampling, you can expect to collect 20 to 30 samples. A typical deployment protocol would involve 
taking the boats to the predetermined GPS position where you intend to deploy the stereo bruvs. Once in position, the skipper can check the depth and current while the other team members prepare the system for deployment. Pairing the system for deployment involves starting up the cameras and lights, ensuring housings seal properly and that the lenses are clean and recording all the required metadata. Attaching the appropriate length of rope and buoys based on the sampling depth. Preparing a fresh container of bait and attaching it to the system. Once both cameras are running and the housings are closed, provide a synchronization point, like a chop on the bait arm for example, that can be used to synchronize the video footage during the annotation process. When ready, the stereo bruvs are typically lowered to the seafloor using a davit arm and winch or by hand. This approach ensures that the system lands gently and causes minimal damage to fragile benthic organisms. If the boat is fitted with an echo sounder, then it's often possible to view the descent of the stereo bruvs through the water column and this enables the descent speed to be reduced just prior to landing on the bottom. Upon landing, the skipper takes a waypoint for the sample using the GPS and then begins moving the boat away from the position while the crew deploy the rope and buoys. Once clear of the rope, the metadata from the GPS waypoint can be recorded and the vessel can move to the next deployment site. After the stereo bruvs has been on the seafloor for 60 minutes, it can be recovered. The objective is not to pick up the stereo bruvs until the vessel is on the GPS waypoint directly above the stereo bruvs, as trying to recover it while away from the waypoint will result in the stereo bruvs being dragged over the seafloor. This could result in the system being snagged in reef, damage to equipment and or damage to the habitat. Once the stereo bruvs is back on board, the research team can check the videos to confirm that the sample worked. The SD cards are then removed and placed in a storage container to be downloaded later. If necessary, light and camera batteries must be changed and new SD cards inserted into the cameras. The researchers then repeat the setting up process and record the relevant metadata for the next sample. Following a day at sea, the research team will need to carry out equipment maintenance and data management. All batteries used during the day will need to be charged and the boat kits repacked when ready. The stereo bruvs should be rinsed with fresh water. The housing o-rings and o-ring seals should be cleaned and fresh silicone gel applied. Camera and housing lenses should be cleaned. Data should be downloaded off the sensors, such as temperature or depth, correctly named and transferred to the project data management system. The metadata for the samples collected will have to be transferred to the electronic database and all of the videos will need to be downloaded from the SD cards into the project data management system. The videos must be named with a unique sample ID listed in the metadata. Once this is complete, a second person should review the files and folders to confirm that everything has been done correctly. Field research typically requires multiple days of sample collection and the long days can quickly result in fatigue. Having quality control protocols in place will help to ensure that no data and time are lost. Following the successful completion of a research trip, all data will need to be transferred to your organization's data management system. Field trip reports should be compiled and all equipment will need to be dismantled and thoroughly cleaned. Following this, the biodiversity information from the videos will need to be recorded. This final step will be covered in detail during the training course.